We are back on Play Forward with Alexis Garcia, uh, filmmaker, writer, director of Daughter of the Sea and other work, no doubt. Daughter of the Sea, highly produced film, very, extremely well executed, not easy, spreads across countries. Um, Alexis, thanks for being on the show. Would you like to introduce yourself or the film in any way? Yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, so honored to be able to uh, share a little bit about my film, um, which we made in Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican. Um, I was born in the diaspora. My family's from New York City originally. Uh, but I spent every summer during my childhood visiting the island. Um, my grandparents lived there. And uh, we actually filmed on my grandparents' farm, uh, which still exists in the mountains of Puerto Rico. We're the so first beautiful. production. <laughs> yeah, we were the first production to ever happen in that town. The town is called Naranjito. There was a lot of firsts that happened on this shoot. And um, I, I've said this many times that this film is a miracle. I think all films are a miracle. Um, but this one, I could feel at every juncture a miracle happening in order for it to 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 actually come to fruition. I'm just so grateful um, and that it, it that it did. <laughs> It it did come to fruition and you killed it. I mean, it is yeah. extremely well executed. It's very seamless, you know, from start to finish. Um, there are some very complicated scenes in there. Um, you have a large for a short film and a large cast, very large cast. Acting is great, and um, there's a lot to talk about. Um, and it's always, you know, it's always really, for me, so interesting. And and this is not the thrust of the show, so I don't want to diverge here. But maybe if you can weave some tips and tricks and that would be great. But when, you know, a director is able to really kill it with their um, cast, um, it's, it's so, you know, you get these really authentic performances. And that's so difficult to do and so difficult to open up um, actors. Um, and it's such a very natural narrative that you have. So saying that and kind of laying that out there um, for reference for our listeners, the first question of this is more on the creative inspirational side. And what was, what is the emotional connection that inspired this journey for you? Uh, yeah, uh, one of the themes of the film is uh, grief and and moving through grief um, and dealing with loss. Um, I had lost my grandfather years ago, uh, but um, sort of the the premise of this film is based on on the loss of our our main character's grandfather, who she had a really close connection to. Um, and I was I've been kind of meditating on grief a lot just because. Uh, we were coming out of the pandemic. Um, I wrote this this story in 2021, and we were still kind of in the midst of of great loss, and um, and and I was kind of thinking about what tools are available to us and uh, for moving through grief, and and um, and I was also thinking about like the medicine that I could put out in the world through a film. And, mm. and if there was a functional use for this film, um, what could it be? And, and that's where I landed on, on the, this, the premise, um, which, which involves a, a young woman uh, who's played by Princess Nokia, who after the death of her grandfather uh, receives um, a spiritual calling from Yemaya who is known as the uh, Orisha goddess of the sea. She's part of the um, Yoruba spiritual tradition, which is um, spiritual tradition from West Africa. Um, and that spiritual tradition was brought over to the Americas during the transatlantic slave trade. And um, worship of the Orishas exists in, in throughout the Western hemisphere uh, because of, of our, of those African ancestors and, um, and it's still, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of value um, that, that we as modern day people can still find um, through that, um, I've been calling it a spiritual inheritance. I think mm -hmm. um, many of us don't have a uh, material inheritance from our ancestors, especially ancestors who are four or five generations away, but we do have this spiritual inheritance that we could access. And I think that goes for anyone. Um, if we really, you know, 
engage it or um, seek to find it or seek to make that connection. That's awesome. I mean, I love like, you know, the thing that really turned me on and what you said, um, the whole thing, didn't, but the particular word that you said is medicine, you know, putting out medicine. And, you know, for me, that seems so much of the art product and process that is a medicinal kind of creative thing you know this creational energy is so medicinal and healing um and you know by nature the idea of creation as you know creating something whole and healthy um is is the agenda <laughs> for creation so um that's awesome and you know um seeking the spiritual inheritance i think is something that is not talked about enough at least you know in my comment um and i think that's that's great and it's a it's a really profound thing to do as a human being is to go out and and to get that and especially when you're called and to answer the call um so that's beautiful um and i you know i think the greatest art um that i've you know is the one the artist connects to most right the one that they can channel to that like they they gotta feel it for the audience to feel it Mm -hmm. and um you know on every level and that's you know and and if you're writing a book it's it's one guy right it's the writer and when you make a movie it's well we got it we got the director's got to feel it cinematographer right everybody's got to feel it and that's a director's yeah. job so that's kind of going back to the director's role but you know the feeling the project and where i was leading with that is that the the art that i've um been touched by the most and moved by is the one that's been felt most by the creators and it is the one that is most personal to them so most personal can mean like they've gone through it and they're wrestling with it like you have in this case with grief and the loss and or they resonate with themes and filmmakers have embedded themselves in an environment where they have learned the context well enough to you know just recreate it and um so that said there's so many themes grief being a foundational one and the film starts off with a young woman in a big city with a you know sort of a, a a sexy career and you know she's kind of a mover and shaker wheeling dealing you know like a lot of people in new york city la say wherever it might be you know and they can get caught up and wrapped up in their ideas of themselves and the ideas of the parties and the people and the mingling and then kind of you know that creates can create a rootless experience and this character goes back home called by the death of her um Mm -hmm. grandfather and all so that um being the the clay that we're working with as a viewer, however you'd like to tackle this question, but I, I kind of phrase it lately in this way, as a viewer now watching the movie, what do you feel the message of it is? Yeah, I think um, you, I think you really, you, you nailed it when you were like, she, she's coming home and that idea of, of coming home and, and returning to our roots. Um, and this happens like in the physical form of her actually getting on an airplane and, and going home. Um, and then it's also uh, the spiritual calling and being called home. Um, and, and it's, it's not only about like the, this, the, that physical place, it's, it's kind of too about, um, finding a home in yourself, uh, and a home that, that you can take with you other places. And, and I think that for me personally, having a, a spiritual foundation has been one of those elements that ha- that has made me feel more at home in myself, and um, and that's something I take with me everywhere, and and I can come back to myself and and be grounded in that. Um, and so um, that that's definitely another kind of aspect of 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 what I hope people take away. But then I think there is something um, kind of transcendental that, that happens over the course of the film and, and that, um, you see her connection to nature and then you see her connection to, um, the otherworldly. Um, I think that's like one of the, the most, you know, amazing things about filmmaking is that we can present other worlds and we yeah. can imagine other worlds and we can also, 
um, create magic uh, in the mundane, right? Like it's yeah. a mundane uh, conversation around a breakfast table, but what they're talking about is a little bit more, um, uh, I think it's like, it's a regular conversation, but at the same time, there's there's an opportunity to, to infuse that magic. And, and that I think was is something that, that I hope the audience takes away too, is that, hey, there's a little bit of magic in the mundane. For sure, for sure. You know, I'm very much um, of the same uh, opinion or the same kind of uh, feeling, you know, more than an opinion really, is that, you know, I, I practice yoga. And so union, <laughs> yoga means union, you too. And uh, so, as you know, it means union, right? And that, that element of union is home, right? When mm-hmm. we feel that practice of union, we're not kind of separate from everything else yeah and so I think you know as humans we have this kind of we've been cultured in a way to work and earn a living and nothing wrong with any of those things and so we have to compete mm-hmm. and um we haven't figured out how you know to do that maybe in a, in a less kind of threatening way to one another and, and, and the self yet but uh, mm-hmm. there's hope and yes. then, you know, right, there's got to be a way to do yeah. it where everybody wins. <laughs> yes. And so, um, so, you know, there's that climactic moment in your movie where the main character is called and she answers the call and she creates an offering. And so she has created this offering you know, to, to create that union, you have to hear the call and then you come to it with an offering and you give the offering away. And that there's that something that is so critical in making the offering, you know, and that offering then is accepted. And mm-hmm. when you cross that threshold of being accepted, all of a sudden, all the walls come down, right? All the walls come down. She starts wailing and crying and she's you know, in, embraced in the arms of her entire family. I mean, what an amazing moment. And, um, you know, and moments like that exist in our lives, but they have to come from a place where you've got to go out there. You've got to go out there. You've got to make yourself, you've got to offer, you know, your heart, right? And um, it's it's beautiful um, when that happens. And and that's sort of, I guess, a message that I'm playing with in terms of creating that human connection, you know, mm-hmm. creating that human connection where in every interaction, you offer something to the divine and the other, right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. you have that reciprocation. It's like, oh, yeah, these mirrors are amazing. And then, like you said, all of a sudden that mundane is, you know, that veil is lifted from the mundane. So... <laughs> Um, do you have any thoughts about that before I proceed to the third question? Yeah, no, that was that, that was like so profound. I really like go off. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I think too. I think it's like one of the the practical uses of this film was like for people who who might be interested in um, the Orishas who might have seen Yemaya on on Instagram or something or heard about it or or always been drawn to the ocean. I think that it was like. That there are these elements on this planet that are that are healing elements and there there, yeah. there are ways to engage with them and um and the the practical use of this film is that I present a ritual for a person to actually that's accurate that they could go and do mm-hmm. to make a connection with with Yemaya or make you know give an offering to the ocean for example um and so um yeah that was that I think you really kind of nailed that too the um you have to when you hear the call then you have to respond you have responsibility to do yeah do that thing to to, you know a bot be a body in action uh in order to to receive um to then receive uh whatever kind of karmic thing is waiting for you on the other side of that yeah it's beautiful Alexis, last question on Play Forward. How have you been changed as a person after making this movie? Oh, <laughs> um, well, I think I've 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 had so many um, beautiful uh, 
opportunities to to share this film with different audiences on the festival circuit and um, this summer we were invited to to be a part of the Smithsonian Folklife Festival in Washington DC and like present the film on the National Mall and it was really surreal to to have that experience and to to um to be able to like have an idea that I then was was able to you know by sheer will and and uh, forces of of nature you know bring to fruition and have a vision that I was able to to actually execute and put put on screen it was like such a fulfilling experience and in, in that I I have always wanted to 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 do something like this and and um and then I finally did you know I I made a film previously but it's it'd been so long that I was like this isn't my voice anymore like I I I need something I need to do something new that really you know sh shows um the kind of storyteller that I, that I want to be and and I want to make a film in Puerto Rico which is another kind of hero's effort and um, and then I did, and that was, I think, I feel a lot, I'm like very proud of myself for doing that, but I'm also really grateful to all of the amazing creatives that I connected with over the course of, of making this film, because obviously it just wasn't me. I think directors are lucky that they get to put their name on something, but it's like, there's a, there's a hundred people behind a project at least that are, you know, have touched it or had, had some kind of, um, lent their own magic and, and, um, connecting with, with a community of creatives um was like one of the most fulfilling things about this experience and and honestly I can't wait to do it again and and I think that's the I think that it changed me in that I'm like I I've done this and this is all I want to do now I just need someone to to give me money to do it <laughs> right but like we were saying earlier you don't you know right, just right, go exactly. out you, just, you know you're the writer you're the yeah. writer get one person and right, exactly. I know, totally. you know, absolutely. dig in the darkness and you will find the light. So that's right. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, too, that like there, there, there are, you know, when you step out in faith or you've created this thing, like then like like the miracles aligned for for Daughter of the Sea. It's like yeah. the same thing happens for for any person that that is is creating if they step out with that offering you know there's going to be a, a response and there there that force is is going to connect and and help um drive things to fruition so yeah, yeah i think that's that's also a big um like a learning to or piece of advice even is yeah. just yes show up and do it and yeah. and and you'll see that you can and that you you will and that you'll overcome and then and then uh, the the world needs your art. <laughs> so yeah. It's like... yeah, yeah, it's that's awesome that you said that because it's you know I'm, it's funny. I had a play forward yesterday, and I talked to this filmmaker, who's a really cool guy, and cinematographer, and we were talking about being an artist and how the assumption, especially among filmmakers, who go to school for it, have this expectation that they need to be career artists, and somebody's got to pay them. Right. They yeah, like yeah. most artists don't feel that way. Like I'm a yeah. painter. I'm not expecting a paycheck necessarily. Yeah. Um, so it's like in my conversation with him, I was like, look, man, you know, I hate to tell the filmmakers, but the chances are you're not going to be a career filmmaker because it's just a numbers game and the numbers yeah. aren't there. Um, I've done the research on the numbers, you know, I break them down. But and this is what's awesome is what you're saying right now. It doesn't matter because if you go out there and you put yourself out there, that next step, that foundation, there's going to be a platform. There. It may not be money, but yeah. there will be a platform. You take that next step, there's another platform. Exactly. And that's an act of faith, you yes. know, and that is what is amazing about filmmaking. That is what is amazing about filmmaking. Yeah. 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 Honestly, it takes a lot of faith and yeah. And that I think is is you know part of the beauty of it too is like sure. trusting the process, um, you know, overcoming the fear of of not knowing and and um, and doing something incredible, <laughs> something magical, right? It's like absolutely, absolutely, you get this thing in a little box, video, and you know this, it's amazing. Alexis Garcia, um, you did it. You made the magic, and um, thank, you. thank you for being on the show. It was a pleasure and honor to have you. Thank you for having me. Really, you're welcome. 
You're welcome. It's a fun uh, conversation. It is a fun conversation. Thank you. You're great. And I look more forward to more of your work. Keep us posted. Until next time, everybody, peace on Play Forward.